because of his sunny disposition, he was known to his teammates as Dr. Feelgood. He never got injured, he never got mad. Willie was the kind of a guy you could tell your worst jokes to and always get a laugh. Herb Adderley, who also played for the Packers, summed up Davis's friendly nature when he said, when Willie dies and The Undertaker is finished, he'll rise up and say, nice job, buddy. When I describe Willie Davis, I find myself talking not only about fun and good fellowship, but also about effort, dignity, and the struggle to make yourself worthy. In 1960, a black man in Green Bay looked as out of place as Little Richard on stage at the Grand Old Opry. But in a 10-year career, Willie Davis took his place as one of the great defensive ends in pro football history. He was the war eagle of the pack of defense, swooping in with wings extended and talons bared. There was no escaping Willie Davis. For this bird of prey flew across a football field. When he was a very small player by today's standards, but gosh, what a competitor. And he got more done, I think, with what he had to offer than anybody I know of. defensive ends in the league. And I, I always thought I could block him because he was just too small. What I found was that he was very aggressive in chasing the plays. Defense, you kind of play with frenzy. You play it with excitement. It was much more exciting to me to be on the attack. ever remember a football game that he played in where I didn't think Willie Davis played absolutely the best he could possibly play that day. Davis's fierce determination was born against the Philadelphia Eagles. In the fourth quarter, the man Vince Lombardi said would run across a minefield to make a tackle, hit a tripwire, and title hopes exploded. I felt that we played maybe cautious and we kind of maybe we were just happy to be there what i remember most about that ball game is is on a play that ultimately turned out to be the big play and it was a sweep away from me and i chased the play but i was concerned that maybe i was going to overrun the play and it was going to cut back and i was kind of like the trail man as it turned out all the blocking got wiped out he turned the corner and went about 30 yards on a third down situation and I tell you, I lived with that play the entire offseason. And I said, never again in my life would I not make a play that I know in my heart or that I feel that I was supposed to make. Willie Davis's vow echoed in stadiums and across championship fields that resembled backdrops for the Hound of the Baskervilles. It was here that a Packer defense whose principles were carved in stone became as solid and lasting as Stonehenge. And always there was Willie. Willie chasing Unitas in the fog and causing the million dollar fumble. Slogging through the mud to sack the Browns' Frank Ryan in the 1965 championship. Ignoring frostbite in the chilling championship of 1967. Of all the defensive ends that I had to look at, I mean, he put as much fear in me because of what he could do and his abilities as, as any defensive end that I had to face. I mean, you just, you didn't block him. In Super Bowl I, he punctured the famous floating pass pocket of the Chiefs' Len Dawson. And in Super Bowl II, Davis' ferocious charge shoved the street fighters in silver and black into back alleys. I would like to be remembered in Green Bay as a guy who gave his all. Whenever I had a chance to walk on the field and play, 
that I played with a certain desire and a certain determination. Willie Davis is the finest combination of leader and player that I ever saw to this day. Willie Davis was a leader in Green Bay, Wisconsin for the blacks and for the Green Bay Packers on defense. He did the job. to my teammate, the Packer organization, but most of all, to you, the fans.